here in our NBA on 2K Sports studio. Ernie Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal at your service. Tonight, it'll be the New York Knicks going up against the Detroit Pistons out at the Palace of Auburn Hills. Well, for Detroit, a win tonight would bring them to 3-0 on the young season. What a start that would be for them. They've looked awfully good in those first two wins. Yo, what is up, guys? Welcome back to another video. We're back on the NBA 2K15. Bring you guys another episode of the My GM series. This is episode 9. So, hope you guys are enjoying the series. If you guys missed the other episodes, make sure to go and check it out. There will definitely be other links to other videos. And there is a playlist, so make sure you guys go check out every single episode if you are enjoying this series. So, right now, we're going up against the Detroit Pistons. Pretty much the Greg Monroe and things like that Andre Drummond this is that team they're going up against the two big headed I could call them the twin towers you know like the Tim Duncan and uh, David Robinson combo but they're not that good as of yet they're two young talents so in the future they will be really good it's a green release from Carmelo Anthony they're gonna be good in the future and this is another back and forth game with Detroit I mean they got Monte Ellis they got D'Angelo Russell they got a pretty, pretty good team. And they brought back Taysom Prince. Shocking to see. When I saw it, I was like, wow, Taysom Prince is back in Detroit. That's pretty good. That's cool to see. So, you know, we're looking to win game number two. If you guys missed the first game, make sure you go check it out. We played against the Brooklyn Nets. Had a pretty close game until the fourth quarter with Jimmy Butler and Carmelo. Took off the chains and put the gas pedal down to the floor. And we pretty much ran them over in the fourth quarter. And we got the victory. Pretty uh, solid victory there. So now we're game two. We're looking to go 2-0 and on the season. A good start, you know, looking to solidify that we are an elite team now. We're not just some slouch team that you could consistently beat. We're looking to be the best of the best in the East, trying to be number one or number two seed in the East, and trying to win a championship. If we win a championship, it's Shane Larkin with a fadeaway three. What a shot that was. We're looking to actually try and win a championship this year. I mean, if we could beat the Cleveland Cavaliers, I believe LeBron's still on the team. I don't know where he went, you know, with 2K goes with their players. The players have the crazy mindset, just always leave their team. You know, I don't know if D. Rose is still in um, Chicago and things like that. I wonder who's the elite team now. Is New York really the elite team now? Who knows? We'll soon to find out. As look at Carmelo Anthony bringing the ball around the rim and it finally goes in for the nice thing. So now we're down 21 to 24 in the second quarter. We're trying to play well, you know, trying to feed Carmelo the best scorer on this team by far the ball as much as possible. And like I said in the last episode, we need to get a new point guard. You know, Mundier is a great player. There's no disrespect to him at all, but he's not a great fit for this team. He's an athletic point guard who's trying to dunk the ball every time he goes to the lane. You know, we need a point guard who actually diss the ball, shoot the mid range and, you know, shoot the three. And Mundier can't do that. Like I said, like I called him in the last video, he's a younger version of Russell Westbrook, a player who likes to drive to the rim and can't shoot. You know, just like Russell Westbrook when he first came out, he couldn't shoot, you know, but he developed his shot over time. And we don't really want him, we don't want to sit here and watch Mundier develop, you know, a mid range and three point shot over time. We need it now. You know, we're trying to win now. We're trying to, ooh, look at Jimmy, the first alley oop. We're trying to win as soon as possible. So, we probably gonna have to make a trade after this episode or in the next episode so hold on to that and if you guys are enjoying this video make sure to give it a thumbs up as we are throwing alley-oops everywhere jimmy tamello that's gonna be a common common trend going between these two teammates i think their chemistry is getting a lot better over time jimmy tamello it's gonna get a lot better look at monte ellis making us look stupid so now we're down 41 to 42 in the third quarter you know like i said this is a back and forth game so i cannot wait for you guys to enjoy that oh look at mellow double rings easy three to make a 44 42 this is a really good game so hope you guys are enjoying it make sure to give it a thumbs up and if you're new don't forget to hit that subscribe and like i said another connection between jimmy and mellow it's gonna be jimmy to mellow mellow to jimmy throughout the season and i am hyped for that so as we have 46 to 42 in the minutes closing in the third quarter two minutes to go Monte Ellis was a problem this game. When I say Monte was a problem, he was a problem. And he actually made us look stupid on, on a few plays with the crossover moves he made and his uh, fast break ability, you know. He was playing point guard for some point in this game, too, which was crazy. So, like I said, Monte to Taysom Prince. Taysom Prince actually made a clutch three at some point in this game. And then Greg Monroe 
looking so amazing. I'm mad that he did not come to the Knicks. I mean, I respect his his mindset to go to the Milwaukee Bucks because the Milwaukee Bucks has a lot more talents than New York. I can't I can't uh, put down or disrespect Monroe for that decision of going to Milwaukee. I probably would have made the same decision if I was in his shoes. You know. Oh, look at Mondier with the with the windmill alley oop right there, man. That is what I'm talking about. That is what I'm going to miss when I trade this guy at some point. I'm going to miss his explosive capabilities to get to the rim and just dunk on people. I'm going to miss that. But going back to Monroe's decisions to go with Milwaukee Bucks instead of New York Knicks. Like I said, I can't, I can't knock him for that. I can't knock him for that at all because that was a good decision. The Milwaukee Bucks is now pretty much a top tier team in the Eastern Conference, being that the Eastern is somewhat weak. You know, it's always has been weak and always will be weak. So I think they're going to be a top tier team, probably number four, number three, possibly maybe number five. I see no lower than number five in the East. You know, Milwaukee's a pretty good team. Michael Carter Williams. We got a uh, Jabari Parker coming back off injury. And look at D'Angelo Russell, hand in the face, fading away for three to tie this game up. 64-64 with 27 seconds left. And we dribble down the court with Mundier. We're trying to get the ISO, but we got the substitution menu. And we're just passing the ball around. Back to Melo for three buckets. What a three-point shot from Melo. Like I said, our best, our best score on this team. So when the clock is going and running down, we have to get him the ball. So with 15 seconds left, they give the ball back to D'Angelo Russell, who just made an amazing three. And they find Monte in the corner, hand in the face, bucket, 67-67. With 10 seconds remaining, we run a quick ISO with Melo. We find Mundier, who we know cannot shoot, which is, this was the turning point where I had to get rid of Mundier. You can't, if he was wide, you saw how wide open he was, but I realized he cannot shoot that mid-range. I had to pass it back to Melo, where he was kind of double team, and we shot... A horrible three-point shot that probably could have win being that Carmelo Anthony has really good shooting capabilities. Um, we missed a shot. So that's what was my turning point. We need somebody who could shoot the mid-range and shoot the three. So look at Jimmy on the, on the tip-off. Jimmy trying to reel the team in like he did in the last game with the fourth quarter. You know, led the team in points and led the team to victory. So now we tie 69-69 after Monte Ellis easy layup. We couldn't stop him. And look at Jimmy. Like I said before, Jimmy is clutch man fourth quarter time overtime he is there looking to score and get stops on defense because that's what he does best so a good pass to Mon greg monroe and he is a beast man i'm so disappointed he didn't come to the next but it is what it is like i said he's a good talent and he wanted to go to a good team i like a canter with the alley-oop and i just love canter he just plays he just does the hustle stuff he gets rebounds he gets blocks he does what he has to do he's not an offensive juggernaut but when it's time for him to score he gets his points and Monroe, once again, with the easy mid-range for him. So, but we are tied 74-74 after a foul and uh, a miss and make of free throws. And it was time running down Jimmy Butler. Like I said before, Jimmy is the star of the team alongside with Carmelo Anthony. And he gets the and one to go. So, after the and one, we're up by two. And Jimmy with the free throw to make it a three-point game. Easy. 86 overall free throw shooting. So, that's pretty good. Being 77-74, 35 seconds left. We get... Reggie Jackson with the foul. Fortunately, we did foul him. Carl Anthony Towns, the big body, seven footer, fouled him. And now we send the Reggie Jackson to the line to see if he can make two free throws on the first one. He almost missed, but he did get it a full sword in 77 75. Nicks up. And on the second free throw, buckets. So that's good. We are up one with 30 seconds to go. We do need to find somebody. We found Carmelo Anthony. Easy lane. But we decided to pull it back. You know, we want to kill some clock. We don't want to give them too much time. And they do double Melo. But, and as as we, I don't know if you guys saw, we did uh, sub in Shane Larkin, who can shoot the midi and can shoot the three. And like I said before, at the end of the fourth quarter, Mundier could have made the game winning shot, but we decided not to shoot with him because we know we can't shoot. So we put Shane Larkin in and he gets score and look at the score 80 to 76. Carmelo, how were you able to take control of this game and pull out the win here tonight? We will not win it this way. It wasn't easy. We knew it was going to be a battle. But they came back, made some runs. We stuck with it and we won the game tonight. Carmelo, thank you. Kevin, sometimes it's more about the will than the skill. As we get to do, we get, get the victory there. Sorry for my slurring over there. And you guys check out the stats. And like I said, Mundier, this is his last game. Sorry to say, 
So if you guys enjoyed the video and I will catch you guys on the next one. I am out. Peace.